is an enormous subject area, so there's no way that I can do everything about it. Um, but what I will be doing is just showing you um, some demos, just the things that I think are interesting. So firstly, um, when you talk about some clouds provide more than one of these, most clouds not as provide for them, um, but some people only play in one space. So if we work from the inside out, infrastructure as a service is where your application has uh, or your your provider gives servers, network, storage, load balancers, any other type of hardware. And you would typically use infrastructure as a service to host things that you've built. Um, platform as a service is where the cloud provider has ready made platform. So you don't have to build or anything else. They're already there for you. And you just upload your code or your database definitions and then you just run your apps in there. The model that you'd use to build something. And then software as a service is the uh, things like Google Docs or Office 365 or um, you know, any other kind of services where it's not really something that you need to build, it's just something you can use. So from the inside to the outside, um, you know, IaaS, infrastructure, networks, firewalls, that kind of stuff. PaaS is runtime, so with Java app or your node application or your the code and it'll run. And SaaS is the uh, software as a service where you can consume services people have made available to you. So if you look in the Azure cloud and we think about the infrastructure as a service offerings that Azure has, it has the, all the networking tools that I was alluding to earlier. So it has VNets with network security groups and routing tables and buttons and um, any other kinds of you might need to see background. It has compute tools. So whether you're running a Kubernetes um, cluster or an info or a, a VM, uh, they are very many and there's a marketplace where pre-built infrastructure as a service offerings are available for you to use. Um, so now in my first demo, I'm going to show you the Azure portal and the marketplace. Before I go on, I just want to ask, um, I'm getting a warning here that my network quality is a problem. Nathan, am I coming through all right? You're fading sometimes, but it's not that bad. Okay, let me quickly just swap my network just to see if I can get better. All right, can you still hear me? Yes. Uh, can you still hear me, Valen? Am I back? I can, yes, I hear you. <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay, so for demo one, I'm going to show you the Azure portal and the marketplace. So here I go to Azure. Uh, this is the Microsoft Azure portal. When you log in to Azure, you have to give it a user identity. You see, I have various different identities. I'm going to log in with my personal email account. Um, when you're logging in over here, you can see Azure is telling me what my directory is. I can switch my directory if I want to. Um, this is the home screen of Azure, so I can see all the different services. Um, in Azure, things are organized by resource groups um, inside subscriptions. So if I click on the subscriptions, you'll see, um, yes, my own pay as you go subscription. Um, I'm an account admin and at the moment I've spent 56 cents on my, um, on my subscription. So this is also an interesting demo in that I've done I did some stuff last night as a test to create some machine learning stuff. And, um, you know, I ran some training jobs and everything, and that all cost 56 cents. So I suppose this is a, a demonstration that the cloud you know, isn't very expensive to use if you're careful about what you create. The, the turnaround on that is that the cloud can cost a lot of money if you're not careful about what you create. So you do have to be careful with what you provision and how you do it. Microsoft offers free Azure subscriptions. 
So if you hit uh, portal.azure.com, you can easily create a free subscription. They'll give you a $200 credit fee to play around. And that's a very good way to, to get familiar with the Azure Cloud. So over here, that's my subscription, that's its name. That's my role in it. Inside my subscription, I have multiple resource groups. Resource groups are containers that Microsoft uses to group all the resources in the um, in the portal. And I'll go through these in a little while to show you the various different aspects of uh, um, the cloud. The other thing I want to show you is the marketplace. So if I go create a new resource in Azure, I get this marketplace that has <clears throat> stacks and stacks of different things. So if I want to deploy a Cisco cloud services router, for example, there's one there I can just deploy. And what, what would happen then is Cisco has created an image. It's sitting in Microsoft's image category or image uh, catalog, excuse me. And when I create that uh, item, um, Azure will spin up a VM and will deploy the software that's in the image into that VM for me. So it's all pre-done, all pre-configured. And you'll see uh, Ubuntu has uh, uh, server images available. These are PaaS things, the web app and the SQL, we'll get into them in a little while. Yes, Kubernetes for, for Microsoft's um, implementation of Kubernetes. There's a storage account, which I'll show you, and you can create DevOps projects. And then if you want something specific, you can search in it for yourself, like if I want Databricks. Search, and then it'll find me everything with that word in its description, right? So this is how you can spin up things if you want to use pre-configured solutions from other people in the marketplace. That covers demo one, the portal in the marketplace. Um, when you look at the Azure Pairs offerings, remember that's platform as a service or things you use to build applications. Uh, Microsoft has uh, the, probably the key service that most things use is the storage account, and that's a place where you can upload data. Um, or you can attach a content delivery network on top of the storage account so you can serve web pages and JavaScript files and images or any other thing. You can spin up an Azure SQL database, you can spin up a web app, and there's a whole machine learning platform. Um, so rather than just tell you about it, I thought I would show you. So demo two will be me showing you the storage account, the web app, the Cloud SQL, and Cosmos. I don't think I'm going to show you Cosmos. Actually, I'll just show you where it lives. So we go back to Azure. You, just, in, I, just, just a second yes. before that, maybe uh, can you share the URL for questions? I've pasted it into the chat. If you can just open it on the yep. screen for a few moments. Mm -hmm. So the people can have at least some kind of a form for feedback. Just just open it into a notepad or something. Yeah, so that's the URL for questions. You can submit an indefinite number of questions. It's mm -hmm. it's http bit.li lk dash ask. There is a small form where you can fill in with questions and I'll try to monitor if there are new questions coming. And on over a period of time, I will interrupt whoever is speaking just to see if we can answer those questions. It's a small form of questions. Next time, I promise we'll do better. At the moment, this is like a temporary solution for the attendees to ask questions. Thank you very much, Berlin. Um, maybe also just as a note for the attendees, these URLs are, cont are uh, case sensitive, so make sure that you put uppercase LK and lowercase ask. Are they really? Yeah, <laughs> I found out, uh, unfortunately, by uh, giving the wrong link out once on a tweet. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that, thanks. Uh, that, that's me. Maybe we can, uh, after you are done, we can show that URL once again on the yeah. screen just for the I'll attendees. Put it at the bottom, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Berlin. All right, so I was going to show you the storage account, the web app, and the SQL database. So if I go back into um, the portal, something that I, okay, well, let's, let's start at the beginning. So if we look at our, um, sorry, I don't think this is the right one. Get my resource groups. Yeah, so here's a, um, a demo of the storage account itself. So what I did to create this little storage account here is I logged in and I clicked add and I searched for storage account. Uh, 
then you just click it and then you get a little dialog to create it. And once you've created a storage account, then it looks like this. It sits here in your portal and you can see it. When you click into the storage account, it has different functionality. So you can store files in it, in blobs. You can create file shares on it. You can put tabular, tabular data in it and you can create queues of information. The simplest uh, one that I wanted to show you today was the, was the file containers. So yeah, this is not a, a container as in something that runs in Docker or Kubernetes. This is just a like a folder, but it's a, a group of folders of data. So I created a little uh, blob container called ML data. And then I went online and I found a data set uh, that someone at Kaggle had used to create, uh, or someone had created for uh, personality questionnaires and they'd uploaded it to Kaggle, the open source um, data repository. And I uploaded that data to you. So if I wanted to upload the data again, I would click upload. And I can select the file that I want um, you know, from my local machine. I can pick whatever I want and I can upload it. Like let's say unlock this, upload this log file. There we go, it's all done, uploaded. So, you know, the um, the this is a very simple way of getting data into the cloud. Um, I will show you how this data is used shortly in a, in a subsequent demo. So the other thing that people do uh, with PaaS, Platform as a Service, is they might want to create some web apps. And again, um, that's as simple as clicking add, typing web application. Um, this is Microsoft's PaaS service that lets you upload any code you want, whether it's Node or .NET or um, there's something else that support here, ASP.NET and .NET Core, um, or just a container, then you can put anything you like. But over here, I'll create a web app. I'll call it um, LKMog Demo. And then I select the runtime stack. So you can see all the different things that are supported. So you see it supports Ruby, Python, PHP, Node, Java, more Java, ASP.NET or .NET Core. Nowadays, all the cool kids are using .NET Core, so we can use that. And then in terms of regions, these are all the places where Microsoft can deploy your code. You see there's quite a few of them that have app service enabled. Um, and in our case, I'm just going to deploy it in Western Europe. Okay, and then it, um, it will also create an app service plan for me. The app service plan is like the server that holds the applications and the web app is like the virtual folder on the server that holds the web application. Just yeah, I'm going to make it cheaper. I'm going to do test and so I want an F1. That's free. Free is good, right? Okay, so there we go. I'll create a web app. And while this is running, I'll show you the SQL. So the other thing that you can do with Platform as a Service in the Azure Cloud is you can create databases. So if you go here to SQL, choose Azure SQL, you create a SQL database. Um, and you have many choices here. These, these things get more or less complicated based on what you want to do. This one that I want to show you, the little SQL database is really straightforward. All you do is you create it. It's going to ask me for a couple more little things. Test, I'll create a new server for it. Um, server administrator password will be UNDBA. And my password is top secret. And I'll put it in Western Europe or not. There. And then I'll create it. And there we go, that's not going to create a SQL database. It's going to live in the same resource group with my web app. Now if we go back, the web app should have finished cooking already. If we go into this demo, here's a, a web app called LKMug Demo. Microsoft's created an application insights, which is a debugging tool. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if we click into it. So this is now a web application where you can do all kinds of things and depending on the platform, you can upload your code into it. And once uh, the code is here, it will be accessible on this URL. So Microsoft ships a default uh, application. Yes, if I click into it, uh, you'll see it'll open a new. This is a new web app that's running at that URL that I typed in. So once I upload code here, yeah, that code will actually change um, and it will allow me, you know, it'll run that code when someone hits the web app. So this is a, a really, really easy way of creating a web application. Um, you'll see there's, you get all kinds of metrics out the box. So to, to do all of this, you know, I didn't have to go and set up a server farm. I didn't have to go and buy Windows licenses. I didn't have to install and configure Internet Information Services or Tomcat or whatever other web server you wanted to use. It's all just done for me. And that's why I'm such a big fan of PaaS because it lets you get to value quicker. Now, you're not trying to figure out how to set up a web app. You've got your web app. All you need to do is deploy your code. So my database is finished. And over here in my little database, I can log into my query editor. Uh, oops. Oh, my IP is not in the, see there's a, the cloud secure by default as well. It's not gonna log me in because my IP is not right. It's got a firewall that uh, prevents me from logging in. And now I can click my firewall. I can add my IP. I could save that. And there you go. No, so you mean that this is this is restricted by default? Yeah. Um, by default, you can't sign in. And now I can. This is a normal SQL database, so I can create a table. Yun, what you just did is you've created a SQL server with just clicking here and there without the need to redeploy a server, install it, download five gigabytes of server, have the proper machines to make it run and all these things. It was just deployed into the cloud, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, and you can see here the table that I created is showing up here yeah, and any other SQL that you need to run, you know, if you want to use the um, entity framework to create against the database, all that stuff's already there and, you know, you can just use it. So I think, yeah. mm -hmm. go ahead, Vinny. I'll tell you my experience in the past, like five years ago, we had to download the on-premise SQL server which is five gigabytes, then install it, then decide what features to install, then decide what uh, system accounts to set up, what data schemas to set up. And it was a journey like I had to spend maybe half a day or even a day to create just my development database. We're not talking about uh, shard, uh, sharded databases or replicas of databases, different nodes. Just to make it work on a developer machine it was taking me like half a day. And now with just the clicking of a few buttons, we can spin it up and start working on it. Right. Yeah, exactly. And what's really, really cool about it is that this database has everything you might need to pass audit requirements and be able to deal with sensitive data. All the tools are here for you. Um, of course, you shouldn't be putting sensitive data in the cloud without going through a, 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 you know, a lockdown process of making sure that your account is properly controlled. But the toolbox is here and you don't have to install or configure anything. Microsoft gives you the advanced data security tools with your um, your SQL. You can change the size of your database very easily. Um, if you want to make your application, uh, if you want to make your database be able to deal with more uh, resources, you basically just click in here and you go, oh, I don't want two cores anymore. 
I want 80 cores. Or I don't want to deal with 32 gigs anymore. I want to deal with uh, many, many more pieces of information. <laughs> so you see the... Um, I'm, I'm so you can scale on the fly, like while your business is growing, if the user base is increasing, you can just drag and drop these uh, uh, slides here and just scale your database. Exactly, yeah. And then you click the button apply and there you go, it's done. And then you have an enormous database. Now, okay, that enormous database is gonna cost you an enormous amount of money, but um, you know, you can, what's really nice about the cloud in general is you can scale to meet your requirements. So if you need to use a very cheap, small solution on day one, you provision it with two cores and one gigs of data or 30 gigs of data or whatever. And then over time, as your application grows and you start realizing you have performance problems because you're monitoring your application, it's built into the cloud for you, then you can scale up your resources. Nice, that's, that's very nice. I like just moving slides around because <laughs> I'm bored from uh, executing scripts and installing programs, so. It's a perfect place for me. Um, just, just very quickly, Yun, we have one question. Uh -huh. And that one question is, uh, I've been just, that's from Damien. And Damien is asking, can you open the Q&A on the live event, please? Unfortunately, Damien, we can't because we've selected the wrong tool. So the only option for you to ask a question at the moment is through that form. Next time for episode two, we will find the right tool to stream it. That could be YouTube, that could be Zoom or something like that where you can all participate. So unfortunately at the moment we can't and that form is the only, uh, our only way to um, communicate with you. But hey, this is episode one. So we will improve next time. Thank you, Berlin. Um, and thank you, Damien, for joining. So the last demo that I've got for you guys, um, just a quick, uh, before I go on to the last demo, here's the URL if you want to ask any questions. It's bit.ly forward slash LK hyphen ask. And as I said earlier, this is case sensitive. So remember, capital LK lowercase hyphen ask. So finally, what I wanted to show you is my uh, bit project for the past couple of years has been data science and I've been watching Microsoft um, improve their data science capabilities. And what they have today is, is a really, really strong offering in terms of uh, resources. So the first thing that you can do with Microsoft is you can go to uh, Azure Notebooks Um, and then you sign in with your identity. So I sign in with the same identity that I use in the cloud there. And then um, once you have a, a, your notebook service open, so this is a platform service that Microsoft makes available on notebooks.azure.com. You log in and then for free, you can create um, Jupyter workbooks. So I'm going to click into my little demo notebook over here. Uh, <clears throat> and for those of you not familiar with data science, uh, Jupyter is an open source project that allows you to write code um, in your interactively. So you can just run any old Python code here. Run that, just waking up a kernel here because what Jupyter does is behind the scenes, it runs a, a Python kernel. And you can write all your Python code in notebooks like these, and you can test them out really easily. So this is basically a notebook or a document where you can put all your um, uh, all your text or all your thesis or whatever your research you're doing it. And in between those statements or those paragraphs, you can also execute the formulas to calculate the the outputs of the, the statistics or or the machine learning or whatever you're doing it's, it's more like a document inside of which you are executing pieces of code yeah exactly um and remember earlier i showed you a, a storage account called yuan data 
I see here I'm actually reading data from that uh, storage account. I'm reading the personality data. And because it's a storage account and the, the access is controlled, I use something called a SAS token. That's all this gobbledygook at the end here. It's just telling Azure that it's a known person accessing the file. So now I've loaded that um, file into something called Pandas. And Pandas is a very commonly used um, data uh, manipulation tool in Python. And then down here, I'm using matplotlib to create a little graph of data. So over here, I'm doing a cross tabulation of the answers to question ext6 and ext7. So if you go up here, ext6 is I have little to say, and seven is I talked to a lot of different people at parties. So I thought it'd be interesting to see what's the, when someone has said uh, they are a zero on this one, what would they say they are on that one? Um, and what was interesting, I mean, I thought there'd be a very clear trend here where, you know, the two are negatively correlated. So when one goes high, the other one goes lower. But in, it turns out that that's not really how it works. Like there's, uh, most people said, I talked to lots of people at parties, a two. And also a lot of them said, I have little to say, a two. So people are you know, not as simple as five and one and zero and everything. So here's just, this is an example of just a simple little thing. I've used free tools from Microsoft. These notebooks are free. It doesn't cost me a cent. My um, storage account over here holds a little bit of data. Um, sorry, demo storage. I've got my data in here. It costs a couple of cents. You know, and I can do interesting data science problems in my notebooks. But but isn't there a charge from the compute? Because I can load a huge data set here and try you to can't, process. You can't over here. So Microsoft okay. has locked it down. So you see I'm using free compute. Okay. And the free compute has got a very small uh, memory footprint. Um, the Is data it set a limit on the CPU hours? Let's say you have 200 CPU hours after your that uh, after that you can't run that note, uh, notebook. That's a good question. I, I haven't actually looked into it. I suspect not. I suspect that they're just using free compute and that it doesn't cost them much. But equally, when you're doing data science stuff, often you have to deal with large data sets and you can't use a large data set on this tool as it stands. What you can do is you can um, create, well, I'll show you now the, the um, so you can click project settings, I believe. And you can set up extra stuff. Okay, let's not get into that. But uh, you know, uh, let me just very quickly interrupt you again. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so Damien is saying that he is a Teams admin for a living, and the producer just can enable Q and A for Teams. That is supposed to be a button or icon or something in the top right. Like Nitin, you are the admin at the moment. Uh, can you try to find that Q&A button on the top right and just, just enable it? Maybe we should invite Damien for episode two to show us how to use Teams. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? That's Yeah, so I verified that. So unfortunately, I think it's a policy that we need to set up. Uh, and that may not immediately reflect here in the, the window. So right now I can't see any any option to turn the Q&A. So we will have to set it up when we schedule that live event, I think. So right. since I already scheduled, I cannot edit it as well. So for probably in the later sessions, we can manage that way. Right now we can continue this. Okay, so we'll, yeah. we'll make sure, like yeah. Damien and everyone that is on the call, yeah. we'll make sure that we have that enabled for the next yeah. session. Uh, sorry for all the inconvenience uh, to all. So probably we'll have, this is a stepping stone for uh, baby steps for us to, to use the Teams Live, right? So we will- But, uh, but it's a good uh, learning. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a yeah. good learning yeah. exercise, maybe, what I've said is we can invite Damien next time yeah. so he can yeah. show us how to apply policies in Teams, <laughs> how to go yeah. do governance in Teams, and how to enable Q&A. <laughs> yeah, oh. definitely. <laughs> All right, now the last thing that I wanted to show you guys today is, so 
these notebooks, they've been around for a long time and they are sort of the de facto standard that people use for data science. And you can work in here and you can use all kinds of machine learning libraries and Microsoft uh, has some available too, but the open source community has millions of different tools for you. And you can save these the notebooks and you can share them with each other and that all works fine. But what Microsoft has realized is that the, the machine learning area is very complicated and very large and they need to get the tooling better for people. So they've built this new um, machine learning studio that I'm now going to show you. Um, it's in preview at the moment, but I'm I'm very excited about this. I think it's a it's a massive step forward in terms of the what you can do and how things work. And, you know, uh, is that something to do with the old machine learning studio? Yes, it's an iteration. It's an improvement of the of the previous one. But the, the big thing they've done here is they've given you um, the ability. So notebooks, like I was showing you earlier, you can run notebooks from here, but over here you can provision your own compute. So you can give the notebook an enormous machine so you can wrangle those big data, uh, data sets in here. The thing that is super interesting for me is something called automated machine learning. So what I did is that file that's in, in my storage account, I created it here as a data set. And then I went into automated machine learning and I sent to my automated machine learning that I want to do an automated run. So I want um, Azure machine learning to help me figure something out. What I'm saying is I'm create, creating a new run from personality data. I want to try and predict, uh, let's call it a demo. I wanted to try and predict the value of column number eight ext8 which is is a good demo here ext8 is i don't like to draw attention to myself i wanted to try and predict that value based on the other data in the data set so based on the questions answers to all the other questions can you predict whether someone would say i don't like to draw attention to myself and then i created a computing cluster here so you can set up uh, settings and quotas and all kinds to to say where the training must happen um, and then I selected some data. I'm not going to run this because it takes hours. But what what Microsoft then did is they ran through all the possible modules they could think of, all the different machine learning models that might be useful to predict this answer from the other data in the data set. And they gave me a model back that I can use to do that prediction. So I didn't have to understand anything about um, how machine learning works, how to split my data into test and train, how to validate it, how to test it. All I did is I gave the data to AutoML and I asked it to do the work for me. And then it created a, um, a whole bunch of models. And if I click into, so what's interesting is you can see over time, um, it started off at 8.46 last night. The first they tried to use these kinds of algorithms it ended up with a 51% accuracy. So what that means is it could 51% of the time it could accurately predict the answer to number eight based on the answers to the other questions in the data set. And then it tried various different things. It used all different um, models here and you can click into any into any one of these to um, see the details of it. So I'm just going to click into the last one it did, which is the best. It created a, an ensemble, which gave it a 52% accuracy. <clears throat> if I click into this, I can go and look and I can see how, <clears throat> how they trained the, the model for me. So here you can see the accuracy curve. You can see some stats about it. And here you can see the confusion matrix. So that's saying, it predicted this answer. This was the actual answer and how many of those matched into which um, uh, block. So it's a way to see how good your model is working. Now, this is really, really interesting because machine learning is becoming more and more of a, a reality for businesses and the data scientists are expensive and rare. So Microsoft is giving you something that says, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not creative. I can't figure out or do new leaps in terms of how things are going to work. But if you give me a data set, I can figure out the best model to predict something. And that's really, really powerful. But that also, that's also good exercises for a learner, for someone that's starting with machine learning, because it will try out a few models 
and you as a like myself as a starter I will explore those models since I will see what they're doing at late stage and I might not know that their model is based on specific algorithms before that thing has tested my stuff which is interesting that that could be good even for for beginners right yeah yeah and it's good for professionals too because you know doing all of these work like working through sorry let me go to my back to my list here um working through how many did we have here this thing tried one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twenty twenty nine different models um that would have taken someone doing it by hand in a python notebook you know it would have taken multiple days but this thing just put some computing power behind it and did it in an hour and 20 minutes do you trust these models you well what's good about them is um well do i trust them i suppose you have to take all machine learning with a pinch of salt really and so um yes <laughs> I, I trust them a little bit but yeah you sh i wouldn't be uh, making my retirement fund allocation decisions on a model just quite yet before it's been tasted properly <laughs> yes uh, so once you have your model and we decreated it in a notebook or with this automated email or with a designer and this is the one that um you maybe uh, you'd be familiar with previously it used to be that machine learning only had the designer um, you get a model you can go to your models you can take um, uh, it's not showing me the model here because i haven't deployed it so you can go to your experiment you can find a model uh, you can click into it no i'm in the wrong place here sorry um, I was looking for it there. There we go. So you find you find your best model and you can deploy it. And now Microsoft will make that model available in an API. So if you have a model that does prediction for any kind of price, or you have a model that takes an image and looks for something in it, you can deploy these models in this solution and they will get um, exposed as APIs and you can hook them up to any other application that you're building. So this is just one example of platform as a service that Microsoft has available, the machine learning bit. We've looked at the, the web applications, we looked at the databases. I mean, this, this is just the very surface of what the Azure Cloud has available. Um, and with the, uh, the uh, certification stuff that we can discuss today, um, you can learn how to teach yourself because you know you'll never be able to learn everything about the azure cloud it just it moves too fast there's too many more things being added um, you just have to learn where to find the information and you have to commit for yourself to you know being a continual learner uh, i'm about to hand over to uh, nathan to talk I have, us through I have the, just uh, one question you i'm sorry yeah. about that so uh, maybe i've missed the beginning but with auto ml do you need a dedicated resource, a dedicated VM that will execute uh, the algorithms or? What you do, yeah, yeah. what you do is you create a compute uh, resource. Yes. So what, what this is, is you can compute instances here or for the notebook. So I didn't create any because I was using the free notebook. Um, I was using a training cluster and if you click new here, you can choose the region. You can choose the size of the VM. Now the okay. VM sizes go from small to enormous. Yes. Like this one has 64 cores and uh, what looks to be two terabytes of RAM. Yes, but that will eventually calculate the algorithms faster, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when you cluster, so my cluster at the moment is at zero nodes because I'm not running anything, so it's not costing me any money. And what Azure will do is as it trains, uh, so as it, as it needs stuff, it will create nodes in that cluster. You can see at the moment it has zero nodes um, and you can set the details. You can tell it how many runs must it allow? So I've said I only want one, a maximum of one nodes. Mm -hmm. And once it's been idle for two minutes, it should scale down. So there isn't a free 
tier here. You no. need to have a dedicated uh, a CPU, uh, just just dedicated VM or something to, to execute the. You do the yes, business. but I trained my machine. I trained my AI for uh, two hours last night, mm -hmm. um, and the total cost for two hours was uh, five cents. Appears to have been five cents. That's very interesting. So after all, it's not that expensive. You get the models for free. They're kind of a trained models. They have to just pick up on your data and try to do the uh, the analysis, and then you're paying for what you're using. Exactly. Yeah. And this is um, I'm I'm not aware of of other machine learning. Um, sorry, I used fifty six cents. I'm not aware of any other machine learning tools that use that work in quite the same way where you can provision your cluster, you can set, um, like I've set the quota to say, don't create more than one node. Um, I believe you can do cost quotas and stuff on you as well, but I haven't dug into it too much to figure that out. That um, definitely deserves more attention. Maybe in future episodes, we can dedicate the episode just on auto ML with a specific case. Maybe Absolutely, your yeah, I think that'd be very oh, interesting. Oh, well, your diploma. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. All right, so that's the URL for questions. Um, and if you want to let us know via comments or. The screen now, okay. I can see a desktop uh, method. Okay, perfect. So you're not seeing the agenda yet? Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, this is uh, right now we are concluded with the own session. I will quickly go over the actual certification journey uh, in between. All your questions you can post it into the, the forms. We will answer them when uh, we, uh, Willin can actually read through. He'll be the moderator. He'll help us through the questions and we can continue from there. Okay. So let me know. I just switched my screen. If you can see it, no. Oh. I can to... see your screen. It's a, uh, it's just presentation. Blue one, so right? Yeah, yeah. No, no. I think it was not going live. Yeah, it was showing the pre one. Okay, so we are starting now. Then, yeah. So, uh. Thank you all for joining the sessions. Um, uh, so sorry for all the uh, the hiccups. OK, so we will have more interesting sessions in the future. So I'll uh, give an overview of the Microsoft uh, training and uh, certification that would uh, uh, start with the Microsoft Learn uh, that I will cover later. First, I will go over the certifications. Uh, your uh, different paths uh, if you are interested in Microsoft uh, technologies and uh, what what are the options for available for you. Uh, and then uh, probably we'll go over the Q&A's. OK. Uh, if you are being a developer for quite a long time, uh, you, you would know about these certifications or if this would be a more guidance for the people who are moving into Azure or who are trying to get some understanding about the issue. So the table of uh, the agenda would be around. We will give a little overview of the certifications. We will uh, uh, high level overview. Then we will cover about what are the certifications available uh, uh, for, for application and infrastructure. Then at, uh, data and AI, modern workspace, uh, business application. So this is how the right now the Microsoft certification uh, have been categorized uh, uh, into different buckets. So one is uh, applications infrastructure then the other one is the data and AI. So third one is the modern workspace and uh, business applications and will give you some resources where you can learn them as well. So, uh, so OK, so I'll go to the next one. So why do you want to get certified? So what are the benefits of uh, getting an IT certification for you or your employer? So so ideally it helps both um, uh, an individual and companies, uh, if they're developers or their uh, um, uh, infrastructure people get certified uh, by uh, for a certain IT uh, um, uh, skills, right? Uh, what 
what it uh, gives is uh, in the industry uh, they it will give you a competitive advantage as an individual it will give you um uh, more chances to get hired then you will get uh, uh, you will get more chances to get promoted uh, it will also help you uh, in terms of job retention um uh, where uh, um, uh, it, it your your job uh, employer says that okay you need to achieve these certifications to um, um, as part of the professional or corporate requirements to maintain the the, uh, the people then uh, it also helps you build a professional uh, credibility it, uh, it will give you an, ad, an opportunity to evaluate yourself again, uh, on a particular technology and then uh, that gives you a credibility for yourself. It also helps you with uh, uh, increasing the efficiency uh, because uh, uh, you will be learning about the new and the current technologies uh, while you are trying to attend these certifications, right? So uh, if, for example, if you are looking at the Microsoft uh, uh, short related uh, uh, certifications, it's uh, keep on changing every two years. That means when and the, as, as the Microsoft um, uh, uh, Azure platform evolves, right? So the new technology or the new services comes into new past services, new SaaS services. Then uh, the, the de developers or the IT professional needs to get updated to those uh, specific uh, areas. So you you can keep on uh, following this certification path and that would uh, uh, give you an opportunity to evaluate yourself in a, in a, a certain period of time. So then um, these new certifications are valid for two years, so that that would uh, give you an opportunity to renew after two years. So then again, you have to learn new things and renew. Then uh, it will also give you an uh, overview of uh, best practices that have been put together uh, by um, the learning participants in the, in the Microsoft uh, certifications. And uh, third thing is it, uh, uh, it increases your uh, earning potential. It's all about money, right? So as an individual, you want to earn more money or salary. So then uh, as per the global market study, so the certifications has uh, provided um, uh, developers uh, a 20 to 40% increase in their salaries, uh, especially in the, the uh, US and uh, um, uh, European markets. And uh, as a company, uh, if, I, if I'm a services or um, a company, uh, services company, or if, if I need to win the confidence of the customer, so uh, if I have certain number of people uh, uh, been certified with certain technology, um, uh, then that would actually attract more customers to us, us and uh, we would help uh, the companies in winning the new businesses. The, th uh, the four thing would be your personal uh, 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 thing that is you are enhancing your knowledge, right? So you want to enhance your uh, knowledge and skills as of a personal goal or the organization or business goal needs you to enhance your knowledge and skills, then the, uh, the certification would provide you that journey. So to yeah. summarize what I've heard so far is you can attend uh, you can book certificate, you can go on the exam, you can pass the exam, yeah. that will give you extra confidence. Yeah. That will give your employer extra confidence working with you or your clients extra confidence yeah. working with you. And that might uh, increase your salary eventually if you negotiate properly because certificate <laughs> itself will not increase anything. And because you've learned something new it's as i've said more confidence which is which yeah. is nice yeah thanks for that. okay so we'll go ahead to the next so this uh, is the the right now the, how the certifications in uh, microsoft uh, been aligned uh, for example there are uh, there is a learning path for you there are role based uh, 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 certification 
uh, credentials that are available to you. The, if you uh, look at the bottom level, right? That's the fundamentals where you uh, that would these certifications would give you foundational understanding of the technology. For example, uh, you want to uh, get to know about the Azure fundamentals or what what is a subscription billing. Uh, or uh, uh, different services available. Uh, those kind of basic knowledge that would as a business uh, stakeholder or something if you want to know about this uh, uh, different uh, um, uh, capabilities available, then you need you can go for these fundamentals. But if you are a developer or an um, administrator or an IT pro uh, or a data scientist or a security engineer or even the modern uh, 365 uh, 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 administrator, you can go with uh, your respective associate uh, level certifications. Or if you are going further above, so if you are a DevOps engineer, uh, or uh, it's the more demanding job in the market right now. And if you are a solution architect, so if you want, then you have an expert level certification. So, so you will move from the bottom to up and this foundation uh, and is more of an uh, uh, optional uh, thing. So uh, if you want to become an associate, you don't need to actually be a foundation. I should found a fundamentals or anything, so you can just go with whatever the respective video. Or if you want to become an Azure developer, go with the respective example uh, example for that. Then the, uh, if you look at the just, apps. Just a question. Yeah. Yeah. So the fundamentals path mm -hmm. is separate yeah. from the associate path. And you don't need to do the fundamentals. You just yeah. can go ahead and do the associate paths. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. It's not about, a requirement. About, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's not a requirement. It's just a basic uh, business. Uh, typically, any anyone with the business uh, uh, manager or uh, who are actually uh, a stakeholder, right? So they want to know about the the basic uh, fundamentals of Azure, so they can follow this. Uh, if you are actually implementing the Azure, right? So you are the uh, responsible of implementing the Azure related services or Teams related services. Then you are going with going with the associate. An expert level of certification. So, yeah. so, so fundamentals is more for business analysts, yeah. stakeholders yeah. that are willing to automate their processes, their own processes or something like that, and yeah. product owners or team managers that yeah. can utilize um, those fundamentals to uh, be more productive. Yeah. And the associate is for technical people. Yeah that require more knowledge, more technical skills, mm -hmm. and you will have like you're a technical like developer or IT or DevOps guy, something like a, a technical professional. OK, yeah. how, how about expert? So expert, uh, from what you're saying is, I think expert is tied to associate. You can be yeah. an expert without being an associate. Yeah. So once you gain any of these associates, uh, then you will uh, uh, go up. You will upgrade yourself to be an expert by uh, taking up, uh, following any of these paths. So same, same is the uh, case. Uh, does that answers my uh, answers your question, uh, William? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Uh, I okay. just wonder what is Microsoft 365 because. Before mm -hmm. I was familiar with Office 365, and yeah. now we see Microsoft 365. Yeah. Is it some kind of a rebranding here? Yeah, so Happening? right now, yeah, sorry, I go ahead. No, that's my question. Mm -hmm. is, is that related to Office 365? Yes, so it's a mix of so you, you, you might have known right. So recently uh, uh, the Microsoft uh, uh, actually there is an Office 365 then uh, Microsoft 365 is a suit of everything uh, the enterprises uh, can right. So uh, it, it inclusive of both Microsoft 365 and Office 365 related technologies in this uh, certifications. So, so overall Microsoft is calling it as Microsoft 365. Yes. Yeah. Like just for the audience, Microsoft 365 includes Office 365, yeah. but also oh. includes Windows. Yeah. And also includes the uh, Intune, uh, the Enterprise yeah. Mobility. 
Yeah. Uh, which the includes surgical. managing the... of devices, yeah. right? Mm. Um, and Microsoft Graph is here as well. Yeah. So it seems that there is a trend here. Microsoft is trying to move away from Office 365 and promote the new SKU, which is Microsoft 365. Just yeah. for the attendees, you will be seeing more and more Microsoft 365 instead of Office. Yeah. Because this is the path forward for uh, for Microsoft. Yeah. So um, Microsoft uh, categorized it into modern work uh, workspace where uh, you will be working with the teams. You will be managing the security of this 365 platform. Then you you will be uh, um, uh, managing the Intune or the desktops, Windows 10, uh, Intune rollouts or their upgrades, all those uh, kind of things, right? You will be managing. So that's why uh, it has been called as modern workspace. And for that also there is a fundamentals, but it's just for the basic knowledge, right? So um, yeah. another thing here, Yoon, it's uh, for the business applications path. Yeah. There, we include the Dynamics and the Power Platform. Yeah. Because I can see Power Apps on top, so you yeah. can be an expert in Power Apps. Yeah. Um, how about being an expert in? Um, Power Automate. Is there such a thing? Or so yeah, far? so that's that's yeah. uh, included. That's all included in this uh, uh, Power Apps and uh, Dynamics 365 developer. It will be included with this uh, same. Okay, because this is a bus at the moment, yeah. right? Yeah. We have the Power Power mm -hmm. Platform where you can create solutions without code or with less code where you have drag and drop editors that are building nice business flows and they're executed and everything is created in a, in a short in interval. Even a business people can create flows without the need of developers. And this is a buzzword and that might be an interesting track to follow yeah, because in, in the future we'll be seeing more and more people trying to come up with quick solutions without the need of building a full blown application with code developers, DevOps engineers and everything, but instead they can drag and drop few processes, few connectors, they can connect uh, one database to something else and they can output very quickly something. Uh, and maybe we can dedicate an episode on the power platform as well, because this is a very interesting topic. Yeah. Recently, uh, I had to help uh, a guys, a guy that uh, had to build a learning system, learning and reward system. And we were able to build the whole system by just using Office 365 and, and uh, Power Automate. And yeah. it required zero development effort. It was just two guys sitting there spending an hour for a week mm -hmm. in, in a, in a course of five weeks, the system was almost complete, which is very interesting. That means that we spent five or six hours and we didn't have to pay for developers. Maybe this is something we have to talk in, in future talks. Yeah, I know that it's most like, I know that this is towards Asia, but I think that Power Platform is also owned by Asia and we can dedicate some episodes here. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I'll move forward. Yeah, so sorry, then, uh, yeah, something sorry. else that would be very interesting to dedicate a bit of time on is how do you mix the Power Platform with yeah. Azure? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Definitely, yeah. Okay, thanks, Yun. Uh, thanks, uh, William, for your input. Uh, so then uh, if you look at here, right, so the, the things, uh, these exams are in beta, so that's why I marked in the star. So for example, this uh, solution architect, the power platform fundamentally, so that became public recently. Uh, and Microsoft 365 developer is yeah. not in beta since yesterday as well. Yeah, so it is also moved uh, to public. Yeah. The team's administrator was in beta. It's also moved. So uh, then uh, the other things. So these are all uh, the different uh, category or, or the 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 uh, 
certification specific to specific applications right now you have a if you if you have earned the certification right you have a, a option uh, to actually um, earn a specific specialty right so that's where you have uh, you can prove your deep technical skills um, uh, using uh, any of these exams so right now there are two exams uh, being available one is called assure for sap workload so if you want to um, uh, uh, execute the SAP workloads in Azure, right? So you can follow that career path. Or if you want to use Azure IoT uh, as an IoT engineer or an embedded engineer, if you are you going to use uh, Azure IoT uh, for developing your cutting edge technologies, right? So you can go for this Azure IoT uh, developers. So that these are all in um, beta, so that can continue. Uh, then I'll go to the next one. So the re recently Microsoft uh, uh, announced uh, that OK, there are certain uh, previous uh, certifications, Microsoft certified solution experts and Microsoft certified so, uh, solutions uh, developer. So these certifications are going to uh, experts. So this is your uh, recommended path for moving from if you are already been certified uh, in any of these certifications, this is your uh, future uh, certification path. Uh, some of you already are certified, then you are good with this. Uh, if you are uh, if you are an MCSC uh, uh, platform, uh, I think MCSC uh, platform uh, fundamental. No, I think the pl platform expert, then you can uh, go and uh, um, uh, follow this journey where you obtain Azure Administrator Associate, then you can obtain Azure Security Engineer Associate, and then you can uh, go with an Azure Architect Expert if you are an IT architect. Then if you are, uh, uh, if you have some certifications on MCSC productivity, uh, you will uh, go with this teams administrator associate messaging administrator security administrator associate if you are uh, actually working on data and analytics and you had some previous microsoft mcsc data management and analytics certification then you can go with this um, azure database administrator associate so this is an uh, exam that is coming soon then there is a data analyst associate so in coming months you might see a beta available and uh, you can enroll for that as well then azure data engineer associate Azure A engineer associate data scientist associate these are all already available for you to take up and if you are certified as an app builder like as MCST app builder uh, where you worked with the uh, ASP.NET, ASP.NET MVC uh, and the uh, .NET framework right so then you uh, the option for you is to become an Azure developer associate that will cover some of the the .NET core and .NET Framework related as well. Then if you ha if you had an uh, MCSC business applications uh, certifications, then that's where you will move into the new exams where uh, finance uh, dynamics 365 uh, fi uh, finance consultant uh, and a consultant associate or supply chain management. Um, those kind of uh, exams, OK? Uh, any questions on this uh, so far, William? Nothing. I'm keen on the data analyst uh, certificates, yeah. but let's see how it goes. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, on a on a. Uh, so now we'll. Um, I think uh, we like, just yeah. just very quickly. Nitin, what is the average price of a certificate? Okay, so typically um, it's uh, depending upon uh, the and the the play and the play and the place you are taking up the exam. Okay, so uh, if you are uh, taking a simple fundamentals exam, then it is on ninety nine if in the European uh, Union region, and uh, if it is uh, any of this uh, administrator developer security and those right so this uh, i think administrator is uh, 99 uh, but we, we can find this um, the the cost by no we're just interested yeah. roughly yeah. because so, our listeners might yeah. wonder okay yeah. certificate i have to pay something yeah what is so, it you know roughly you said between 99 and 120 something like that yeah 165 so uh, the, 165. the standard is 165 for uh, developer security engineer data engineer 
those kind of things. And if you have some discounts uh, vouchers, probably you can reduce that as well. And for taking these exams, you also have different options available where uh, you have a online proctoring option where you can sit in uh, in your uh, in your own uh, convenient place and take up the exam. The only thing is you need to have a clean room. Your de work desktop should be clean. Your uh, uh, the the work area should be clean because the and the, it's a live proctor exam where uh, someone will be monitoring uh, you over the webcam and uh, you can the, the convenience is you can sit in your home and do this certification or you can sit in a conference room and do this certification provided no one is around you. That's uh, very good because previously we used to have to we used to go to certificate centers mm. where you have to travel. If you don't have a certificate center, exam center, yep. you have to travel two or three or five hours to get to the closest city and go there to do the exams. So now yep. they simplified the process. Seems that they simplified the process where you can sit down in your bunker away from uh, COVID-19 and just do the exam, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> OK, that's good. So uh, the the uh, I'll go in detail with some of these exams on how many um, how, uh, for, uh, for attaining any of these uh, what exams you need to follow as well. So in the next one, so this uh, this I think we already explained. So the associates, so this is an optional path. That's why we put dots here. Uh, and if you want to become an expert, you can take either an associate uh, administrator or a developer associate. Then uh, this is the prerequisite for getting a uh, DevOps engineer expert, right? And similarly, if you want to become a Azure solution architect expert, you can go with that as well. And uh, specialty, uh, there's no uh, some uh, pre uh, prerequisites. You can uh, go and take it the SAP workload specialty directly as well. How the, OK, th yeah. that's cool. That's cool. You mm. can take certificates, mm. but how do you prepare? Yeah, How so do you prepare for these certificates? So that's where uh, I'll be uh, covering uh, in the next uh, series. OK. So uh, probably yep. in, uh, in five minutes, so I'll take Yeah, go ahead. OK. Uh, so the learning paths for Azure Fundamentals, this is, uh, I think we covered, we need to know the cloud con uh, concepts, the core Azure services. We need to know about what are the security, privacy, and the compliance trust, and some of the Azure pricing related things. Then if, if and with that, if you learn uh, these concepts and if you have taken the Azure uh, AC 900 exam, then that will learn you the Azure Fundamentals. Um, then uh, if you are trying to become an administrator, then you go. You need to know about Azure subscriptions and resources. You need to know about the storage solutions. You need to know about virtual machines, how to create a virtual machine, how to manage a virtual machine. How do you uh, configure virtual machines to communicate together uh, with uh, or communicate to uh, one virtual uh, machine in one virtual network to communicate in, uh, with another virtual machine in another network uh, uh, and uh, the pairing network pairing then identity management those kind of concepts then you uh, if you are practice with this you can go with ac 103 so for practicing all those things uh, we will uh, we have a very good uh, uh, curriculum put together by microsoft that is called learning path in um, the microsoft learn that i will cover soon uh, now that's for the administrator associate right now going as a OK, so another thing I missed was uh, this AC 103 is uh, going to phase out soon and there is a newer version uh, called AC 104 that would cover the same thing, uh, but um, the exam is a little bit practical oriented where you have set up labs, some more additional contents uh, uh, included as as per the the new uh, services included in the Azure. So uh, this AC 103, I think you can take up to the May, May, uh, May 2020, uh, end of um, May 2020, and after that it is AC 104. But 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 I have a question now. Yeah. You're saying it's going away. What yeah. what what happens when it goes away? Imagine that mm -hmm. I pass the exam mm -hmm. today. 
and that goes away in a month. Do we still okay. have those two years of yeah. active certificate? Yes, uh, the, the, your certification is not going away. Only thing is you no longer can take this exam. This yes. exam won't be available in the inventory for you to schedule. So next time when you want to take the certificate or if you are telling your colleague to actually take up uh, the Ashur's uh, administrator certification, right? So he will have to prepare with AC 104, not with AC yes. 103 once it is expired. But I will still have it for the next two years yeah. being active and yeah. then for the rest of my life being just there. Yeah. OK, good to know. So similarly, the AC203, um, that's our Azure Developer Associate. So you, as a developer, you will get to know uh, about how do you um, uh, use I, I, uh, infrastructure as a service compute solution, then Azure Storage, you, need, you will learn to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize the solutions. And um, you also use Azure Pass Components Platform as a service compute solution, then the Azure security related things, and uh, you will try to learn about using the Azure services and third party services integrated with your uh, applications that is hosted in Azure. So uh, for uh, this, there is a set of online courses, instructional led uh, training courses are also available uh, to support with your learning. Learning. And similarly, like AC103, you the AC203 is also expiring, and you will have AC204 coming. Uh, the, right now, the beta is open, and if you are uh, going to take up the, uh, if uh, it is open for uh, first 300 people, uh, and if you are lucky enough, uh, you can actually register for this exam and take it before of March 22nd. Uh, sorry, March 27th. Uh, 28th, I think, and then uh, you would be getting around 80% um, of discount on this exam. So that means you may be uh, paying around 33 euro for taking up this exam instead of a 165 euro. So that's uh, another path if you want to explore and you have time because um, it's two weeks away from or one week, I think, right? Uh, so you can prepare and take up if you are confident enough. If you are been working with this, you can just follow the curriculum and take it up. OK, so the, the other thing is the Azure Security Engineer where you as a security engineer, right? You will be managing the Azure security where you will be managing the Active Directory and uh, you'll be managing the and the, the platform, uh, setting up the protection uh, um, and uh, security around it and the data and applications, uh, those kind of things. Then you can go for the AC500 uh, Microsoft Azure uh, security technologies. This ex exam is not going away, only the AC uh, developer, administrator and uh, on uh, the, uh, the expert level, the, the uh, architect level exams are uh, expiring and you will be getting a newer version. So on, this exam is going to stay there for some time. Yeah. I have a question. Maybe we can Google that and put it here next time. But what is the average salary of a security engineer? Okay. That should be a very high. Uh, yeah, definitely. So uh, as a security engineer, that's a, that's a key role, right? In any of uh, any of the the company, uh, because uh, I, I, he, he is responsible for managing the the whole infrastructure, security, and uh, setting up or uh, setting up the access or uh, threat uh, protection and uh, everything, right? So then, that's a, that that's a very niche. Uh, uh, role, right? Yes. Uh, so yeah. if I get my certificates, mm -hmm. I can go and get more money. Definitely. Yeah. That's depending I'm on. I'm <laughs> for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, that's again uh, depending on how do you market yourself, right? So yes. That's it. That's so. it. Hmm. OK, so I'll uh, quickly uh, show uh, two more slides and then uh, uh, give an overview of how to use the Azure Learn and all those things. Uh, then the Azure DevOps engineer, right? So that's the expert level certification. Um, that's where you need to have a prerequisite like uh, we discussed. We you have an administrator or developer associate, then you can go with uh, the Azure 
uh, DevOps engineer. So you need to know about dependency management, application infrastructure, how to set up the continuous feedback. Um, the, these are all integrating the continu uh, continuous integration, continuous uh, uh, delivery using the Azure DevOps platform. So uh, if you have all those knowledge and if you are trying to gain that knowledge, you set up a DevOps strategy who are all can uh, commit to the uh, the repo, how to set up the, the policy of a repo, uh, how to manage the pull request, how to uh, create a build release pipeline, how you can uh, uh, push this code for uh, uh, for deployment, all those uh, uh, how to configure the deployment to assure all those knowledge would provide you uh, uh, with uh, uh, Azure AC400 uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps solution. So the key is you need to have administrator or developer associate. Then you need to have some experience playing around with Azure DevOps. Then you can go with this. And in fact, yep. this is on demand. Yep. The DevOps guys are on demand because more and more organizations are trying to automate everything. Yep. And more and more organizations are going that path of build a quality solutions where everything is automated and you need to have all these pipelines. So uh, like we can see that from big companies like Netflix or Spotify, where everything is a multi-layered microservice thing and everything has to be out, uh, automated. You cannot deploy thousand services uh, or thousand containers manually, right? So yeah. that role will be more and more on demand. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so the DevOps is a key, um, a key, right? It's a, it's a one of the top paid jobs uh, apart from an architect. So then that's having a certification, DevOps engineer certification adds value to your job, yeah, as well as your profile. Okay, so we'll go with uh, the last on this, uh, the Azure uh, Solutions Architect Expert. So this is the the highest. Uh, certification in Azure where uh, you can actually uh, uh, use, uh, you can you can learn to configure the infrastructure, you can uh, learn, uh, you, you have the knowledge on workload security, uh, authentication, secure uh, data solutions, uh, solutions for cloud and uh, uh, sure. And you also uh, uh, have the ability to analyze the workload requirements. You also have the knowledge on identity and security, the business continuity strategy, infrastructure strategy, if you, and uh, you, you as, a, as an architect, will be able to de design or uh, the end-to-end -end solutions using the Azure, then you can actually uh, go for this certification. So there are two exams for this. One is AC300 and uh, that's where the Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies where you will configure the core infrastructure and the related technologies. And uh, AC301 Microsoft Azure Architect Design, that's where you will design the the, the infrastructure and uh, the related uh, Just things. for information, AZ301 yeah. will retire in a yeah. few months as yeah. well in flavor of another yeah. one. Yeah, so AC300 and AC0, AC301 respectively uh, are expiring and uh, there is AC303 and 304 that are getting replaced. 303 is the uh, Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies, the new exam, AC304 is the uh, Microsoft Azure Architect uh, uh, Design exam. So once you complete these exams, they each cost 165 euro. That goes, uh, puts you into 330 euro uh, and that would gain, give you, gain you this uh, certification. That's the uh, highest certification. And you must pass both these exams to pa pa achieve this certification. Okay, so that's uh, so far. So then SAP workload is basically AC120 that would uh, give you SAP workload uh, specialty and AC220 that's uh, Azure IoT uh, a specific that I, ha I haven't mentioned here. Okay. But uh, AC220 is the exam for Azure IoT uh, related specialty. 
Okay, so that's on a high level on the slides. Uh, give me a second. I'm switching over to my browser. So uh, just to summarize for myself. Yeah. If all these paths, all these certificates, mm -hmm. if you pass one of those, Microsoft is saying basically this guy is a real professional. Yeah. That can give you more confidence talking mm -hmm. to clients or stakeholders. Yeah. That's very valuable mm -hmm. because sometimes for me, I have to negotiate and I have to like argue might not be the right word with people but once i have those certificates i can say hey guys i have enough knowledge to say that i have a better solution for you and this is what i suggest and uh, because of all these certifications they're taking me more seriously yeah. even the stakeholders when you talk to them it's kind of a a, a different talk Mm -hmm. because they're taking you more seriously. It's not uh, just a random guy giving them suggestions or arguing with them why this will cost more and it will not bring enough value. It's actually a guy that uh, understands his domain and I'm taking more seriously, which is a great benefit in uh, even in the negotiations with managers or stakeholders because we know that they demand on things sometimes they demand on things without any knowledge any technical knowledge and that doesn't bring enough value and having you backed up by certificates will give you enough confidence and will give your stakeholders more confidence when they talk to you i, I noticed that from my experience because i have certificates i'm talking to stakeholders i politely explain them that I know my domain. I also have all these certificates. They're granted me by Microsoft because I've passed exams and they're looking at me differently. Mm -hmm. While 10 years ago, I didn't have those certificates. I still had decent knowledge in technologies, but somehow they didn't take me that seriously. Another thing from my past experience. Yeah. Right? Thanks, Willin. Uh, that's an interesting uh, talk. So we will uh, definitely having a certification adds a lot of value and uh, and time to time where you will look back at your the uh, your capability or uh, the what you have achieved in the past, right? So you will see, OK, I have this any certification at least that you can add it in your CV. And at some point you might gain some confidence uh, with, uh, to prove more with more uh, more and more certifications and then you'll continue your career uh, path up up okay so we we uh, uh, with that uh, give an overview of the certifications now i'll give you an uh, walk through how do you learn for these certifications right so that's we are going to use a, a simple site called microsoft learn so microsoft has provided this uh, free uh, uh, resources for you to actually um, prepare for this certification you don't need anything else other than uh, this uh, uh, certification uh, 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 sorry uh, these learning paths uh, other than um, uh, you are going through any of uh, um, specific trainings or anything you you don't need if you are a self learner you can always go with this um, uh, microsoft free offerings and uh, uh, practice with each each the each of these parts and then you can attain them so uh, that's one way, uh, uh, one thing then uh, before that uh, so once you attain a certifications right so you have something called your acclaim where uh, uh, you will get a badge for uh, for your different certifications so like I have this uh, attend. So recently I got this power platform. So once you earn the certifications, you you can see your patches. Then you can uh, you can share it across in your social uh, profile or in your CV. Uh, any of these badges that actually this badges shows your ac accomplishment and then that 
output at some point uh, you will feel proud about your, yourself uh yeah so then that's about it and if you want to learn about this microsoft certifications right so you have this certification so my, uh, you will have to go to microsoft learning site where you can go with uh, certification exams why get certificate so this is where you will go with and uh, uh, pick up an exam and schedule so browse on all your exams or you can pick up whatever highlighted so here Azure exams is there uh, you can select Azure exams and you are selecting the Azure administrator. Uh, it will show you the details. How do you do the uh, things now? Is there, a, is there a section where it says how to prepare for it? Yeah, definitely. So that's what um, I'll show you with this. Uh, that That's in the Microsoft Learn actually. So if you go to this certifications, right? So you will see a, a path for preparation. So for example, this was an uh, developing a, a beta exam AC204. That's right now beta, right? So you can see uh, the exam details. So how to schedule. So if you you can pick up your uh, local. If for, for me, it is Ireland. Then I pick up Ireland. It will show you what's the cost in um, uh, local currency, and then you can schedule it. So this is where uh, it will give you an exam outline. Mm, uh, so how to get here is uh, uh, you go to the Microsoft Learn. It has two links here: learning paths and certifications. So the learning paths will give you uh, uh, different options. I will cover that in in soon. Uh, then certifications will you can go and browse through the certifications. Then once you uh, select one certification exam, you will get to this page where it will show you the details of the exam and details of the certification. Then what are the skills measured in the certification? Then you have the option to download the skill outline that will give you a detailed summary of all the the things uh, involved in that skill outline. Now then uh, but, but it will I all can see learning paths below, right? Yeah, so yeah. these so learning paths. I can take all these learning paths, yeah. go through all the exercises to boost my uh, knowledge. Yeah, so I potentially have a bigger chance of taking the exam. Yeah, so which this is handy is... because it's right below the it's right below the certificate, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's where uh, the, then the next thing. So there are two ways to uh, prepare. One is if you uh, if you are not uh, OK uh, using an online way, you actually want to sit through a classroom with session and you want to learn, then you will have to go for an instructor learn. That's a paid exam um, and then uh, sorry, paid um, uh, training where uh, you will have to go through any of these training provider who actually provides the training. The, the, the free option for whichever I used uh, uh, was this online uh, free uh, available as part of the learning path in the, the learning and that gives you for each certification what are all uh, topics covered, what um, whichever modules you want to um, learn and its progress as well. So once you uh, complete them, right? So for example, if I, I want to create a serverless application, so you can select this learning path and start. So that's where you have the different uh, uh, sections in it. So each section will take you through, uh, for example, uh, choose the best Azure service to automate your business process, right? That will give you an introduction. It will uh, uh, give you an identity uh, technology options, analyze the decision criteria. Then it will give you the best design first approach to automate. So those kind of things and that. At, but at but it, yeah, yeah, that will also give you experience. Yeah. Can you can you show that experience badge? Yeah. So I'm I'm leveling up. Yeah. Am I? Yeah. So that's where you 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 are gaining these points, right? XP here. So at some point you will be uh, going to uh, leveling up. So it starts from level one to uh, I don't know the the max level. So right now I'm on level nine. So that's uh, I have thirty three thousand XP. So, so it's like a game. Yeah, you're moving through the courses. You're learning something. You're preparing yourself for a possible exam, but you're gaining a level. Maybe you can include that level into your CSV, uh, into your CV as well, because this will show how much experience you have. You went through tons of 
exercises, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so that that would actually definitely add value. But uh, earlier there was Microsoft uh, Virtual Academy. So now uh, the Virtual Academy actually phased out. And so this actually in the achievement section, my profile achievement section, you can see the different badges where uh, which are all you completed, right? So you have the different badges here for each XP. So like pillars of great. So it gives you different badges also. But That's we, quite interesting. Yeah. Will so, an employer be interested in all my badges? So you can actually, sh this is a trophy, right? So you can actually share that in LinkedIn if you want and say, okay, I did this learning path and announce it to nice. the rest of the world. Right. Yeah, so that's a uh, that's a uh, uh, different things. So probably we'll go back to what where I was. OK, so that gives you two ways of learning an online or instructor alert. And uh, if you want to have an option whether you already completed certain things, right? So and yeah, um, this more button being shown here, right? So if you want to avoid that, you can just hide all the completed ones and it also shows you how many percentage of each is completed here as well. OK, so that's uh, one uh, one thing. So if you are less confident uh, that you may fail in the exam or uh, you know, how, what will happen to my money after uh, I fail the exam, right? So you have an option called exam replay. That's where Microsoft gives you an option to actually uh, buy this exam replay uh, uh, package that would give you uh, one exam voucher and one uh, retake voucher. So the, the cost would be around 200 235 euro, I think. And uh, you have a 12 months uh, time um, to pass uh, this exam. So once you, even if you fail in the first take, right? So you, you can uh, prepare uh, or identify the gaps where all uh, the, the, the things happen and the missing happen. Right, so you can take up this uh, the exam free with one retake. So that means the instead of uh, paying uh, 165 plus 165 two times, uh, right? So you can pay around 245 or 260, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, take up these exams in the second retake. So that way you are on the safe side. You have one. Then another option is with the practice test, so where. Uh, you have an uh, exam replay plus a practice uh, test online practice test from uh, I think uh, there is a provider who uh, with um, you can take it up so that will be valid for one month. You can attend this practice test practice test won't be the ex same exact uh, 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 questions asked in the in the exams, but it would give you confidence and to some level of uh, questions available in these exams. Uh, so this would be around 280 or 260 something like that. So then uh, you, you can decide uh, whichever. So if you are confident and you are an expert in Azure, then and uh, then you don't need these offers, right? So you can simply go ahead and schedule it for 165 euro and take it up. OK, so that's uh, on that. And so uh, coming back to the Microsoft Learn. So here, right? So the Learn is the, the uh, re recently or, or in the after, um, before the Ignite Microsoft revamped the entire site uh, where you it introduced new learning paths. So you can actually uh, pick up uh, whichever learning path uh, you want to follow. So you can use a role based learning. So you have the different roles. So if you want to become a DevOps engineer, you select this and then it will filter according to uh, the courses according to your role. So you have the get started with Azure DevOps and it and then uh, choose agile approach to software development. So these kind of topics once you you uh, introduction to Docker containers, building applications in Azure DevOps, scan code for vulnerabilities in Azure pipelines. So these kind of uh, these are essential for an, uh, an Azure DevOps engineer. So that's why you can go over these uh, paths. Uh, so each learning path will have a set of modules and uh, you cover them. And, uh, and once you you are covered, so it these as, um, uh, modules also also have a set of uh, labs, uh, inbuilt labs. So Microsoft will auto provision uh, some of the uh, virtual environments for you and uh, give you instructions. So for example, here, right? So start. So uh, if you look, go 
I'm can I can show you how it looks like. So these are the some of the examples. Now I go to the next uh, layer. So this gives you instructions. It checks your knowledge. And uh, now since I haven't selected anything, so I'll just go with this. Okay. So without doing this, it won't let me go. I'll go to the next step. So these are the exercises you can follow, right? So this will give you the instructions how to do it. So uh, download the backpack file, go to the Azure portal. It will provide you a sandbox environment where you can uh, deploy the things. So all those things will be inbuilt uh, to the site. You don't need to pay anything for practicing on uh, on the Microsoft Learn. Uh, all these uh, services are provided fee uh, for the labs, whatever um, uh, resources required uh, for from Azure, all will be provisioned free for you. Uh, you can just uh, follow the thing, practice yourself, and then take up the exams if you want. Or keep on practicing. So if you as a uh, as a tech uh, technology manager, right? So this will be the simple fundamentals thing. So that would give you so fundamental related things. Uh, then um, if you are a functional consultant, you have certain things you can learn from here. It's almost it says you need to learn this many content. <laughs> uh, so if you are a data scientist, pick it up. You will see all the, the data Azure fundamentals um, uh, because you need to know certain knowledge of Azure fundamentals is required if you want to become a data scientist, right? Because he, the fundamentals will explain you about the core services available and how, it, how the building happening and all those kind of things. So that's where you can cover the Azure fundamentals. So this is the learning path you can use for Azure fundamentals exam as well. So the core fundamentals. Uh, you follow this and uh, you'll get the necessary XP. OK, so that's on a then then you can def and define the levels as well here. You, you are a beginner or intermediate or uh, you want to pick uh, the learning path only. You can do that filtering or you can specify the product here. So if you want to uh, to know only the content about the virtual machines, you can select that. So it will show you that. Uh, so that's a learning path that would and in the learning paths, right? So you have a Azure related learning path. You have the that Dynamics 365 related learning path, Microsoft 365. So, so you can pick up the respective learning path uh, and follow that. So once you select the learning path, you can pick up the role. So if you are an administrator, Microsoft 365, so it can, it can show you the specific ones. The other thing is that if you are picking up the Azure, then again your role related. If you are in a solution architect, then all the solution architect related content will be displayed. Similarly, Power Platform. So all the Power Platform related content. So you you want to use a you are a business user you want to use power automate business user power automate then these are all uh, right now i think it's in uh, it's not yet published so microsoft is working on preparing these contents so shortly it will be available for you know. and now browse all then you will see what uh, i explained earlier now coming back to the certifications right so this is where Hey, you will start your journey so so you can pick up the developer. You can see the different certifications available here. Uh, so this is MCT certified educator is a different uh, exam for especially for MCT. I think uh, uh, if you are a trainer or something, right? You you are providing the, the trainings to different um, organizations, then you can for go with Microsoft Certified Educator. So if you are taking the the 365 fundamental power platform fundamental, then again it gives you some free learning paths. Then how to prepare for instructor -led training. So those kind of uh, things also you can follow, and uh, some. Uh, some insights why to get certified. Now browse certification. So if I uh, once you browse that, it will show you all the whole list of certifications. 
and uh, the recent beta that's AC204. Once you select that, you will go to, you can see the details. The, the exam outline is a PDF right now. I couldn't download it, but uh, once you download that, will show you some details of what all things will be covered in that. Then exam policies and uh, the exam policies once you schedule right so in case if you couldn't uh, take the exam um, by the due date uh, you need to reschedule it before six days uh, of the exam uh, and schedule date so that you can reschedule it for free if it is going beyond uh, uh, sorry if it is uh, within that six days right you had to pay uh, some to, uh, uh, some reschedule fee to Microsoft in case if you are rescheduling. Okay. And some training certification guide. So once you are done with right, so you will have an uh, once you certif get certification, you will see your patches here. And another thing is mcp.microsoft.com. That's where you will see your certifications. Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong login. Oh. So I have some extra security on my account. So give me a book. Let me approve my approve. OK, so that takes me in. Why is it taking me out? OK, Nidin, so it's because we are almost at the end of yeah. the, the mm -hmm. content. Uh, like. I yeah. see. Almost everything I need. Mm -hmm. I have learning paths. Yeah. I can go select the learning path, then I have to. Uh, I have the option to take some free uh, preparation exercises there. Not some, but yeah. loads of them. But yeah. what you've showed with the filters, mm -hmm. that will give me enough information to get started. And yeah. in case I go on an exam, I can take it from home. Mm -hmm. In case I fail. Uh, optionally, I might have another try. Yeah, which is nice. So th this is the path for me where you are saying you have all the materials in Microsoft Learning. Mm. You have the certificate path there. Yeah. Just pick up a path that you mm. think you can progress on, and you think that's something you'll be interested. Go there, build your level up, earn experience, earn badges. Have fun. And the same way I didn't sweat a bit to get the certificate and then shout out to everyone that you have the certificate, right? Because yeah. it's, it's an effort. Which, like, th that's a nice thing because in the past we didn't have that much information, especially even for Microsoft certificates. Usually on their site, like 10 years ago, we had only Microsoft led training and a book. And yep. I remember 10 years ago, the lead training was paid and it was not a, 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 um, it was a big amount of money, much yep. bigger than the exam. Hmm. And the books, they were paid as well. At some point they've made the books free, but the instructor led training was still very expensive. Yep. Now what we are seeing as a trend is you have maybe more free content than instructor led trainings. Yeah, that definitely. puts you in a very sweet spot. That sweet spot is that you can get enough knowledge by just uh, completing of uh, all these exercises there. And uh, like if you have gaps, you can try to fill in the gaps by uh, asking uh, friends or whoever has enough experience, even asking us because we have experience with taking exams. So you can even ask the Letter Kenny community for advices and how to approach it. And after that, 
you can try to take the exam, which is great because it's it's not costing that much anymore. It is costing around 120 euro or 150 euro. And after that, you can get that exam and it's a very nice thing in your CV when you're negotiating, when you're talking to stakeholders, just to have it. And it's a very nice thing for you because you will learn so much through all these exercises and all these preparations. And I always find that very, very helpful and very useful because I think I know many things, but at the end of my preparations, I question myself, do I really know all like all these new things that I've learned? It's such a universe and I have yeah. even more questions now around specific technology and I'm even more excited to work with that technology. And it's always like that. It's a more like a synergy. You combine your preparations, trying to have fun, maybe with a glass of wine, not more than a glass of wine. So, uh, and then at some point you have so much more questions because you've learned something and you're about to discover more and more stuff. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, if you approach it like me, because I always, I'm always keen on new technologies, that you end up at the end after the exam with much more knowledge that you can put into practice, put in your daily work. And it's it's interesting that now it's more accessible and costs less. Yeah. Am I, like my summary, is it correct? Yeah, perfectly. Um, uh, that's uh, that that's the real intent right so the, of these learning paths provided by microsoft because earlier the developers were struggling to actually um, buy these books or attend these trainings these were all um, now this they give an opportunity for self-study uh, and a lot of resources available for free and especially if you want to uh, do the practicals right you, you need to utilize the assure um, services right so then you need to pay out of pocket so these are all things will be a big uh, question for the developers now with this uh, environment where you it will provide you a free sandbox for you to practice yourself the the needless you you are going for a certificate or not as a developer i can actually learn new things from the microsoft learn so that's the idea is that's why that's a good thing that microsoft actually brought it up and that actually helps a lot of developers and also the, the bit of uh, gamification by introducing the xps and the badges that mm -hmm. really adds value yeah OK, so uh, that's uh, I'm closing uh, my uh, uh, my part uh, before uh, doing that because Willin has to cover his part as well. So um, there, uh, there, there is a there's a QR code. If you are interested, you can scan that there are some uh, exclusive items for you to actually open it up. And um, if you are going to learn, there are some step by step learning guides and everything. And uh, also don't don't forget if you are good on Ashu, uh, you just add your Microsoft Azure as a skill in your LinkedIn account so that it is easier for you to get connected with uh, uh, the more uh, uh, wide Azure developer community, and uh, the the uh, there is a the latest announcements and free events uh, uh, for developers happening in Ireland are usually uh, uh, published through official Microsoft uh, Twitter account called uh, at right MS Dev IRL, so you can follow on that as well. Uh, are we going to we, publish our uh, video from there? Yeah, um, not exactly. Probably we would uh, at some point. Yeah, so with that, I'm probably uh, wrapping up uh, my uh, session and then over to you, Willin. Yeah, Will so uh, here is my suggestion because we are at the end, right? Yeah. And there is not enough time. Mm -hmm. I can talk about the Microsoft MVPs next time. Yeah, fine, but fine, that's right. Whoever is attending now, if you can't attend next time, we're recording these sessions and we'll try mm -hmm. to publish all these sessions. Yeah. So you're not you're not lost. You, you haven't wasted your time waiting for maybe the last thing uh, for the MVPs. How about we still cover that topic next time? We record it and we publish it for whoever cannot attend because it's it's already late. 
Like, yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, uh, I think it's good. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we are still trying co- to come up with the right format mm-hmm. about the Thursdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. in the future episodes, there might be a little here chaos until we find the right format for yeah. all of you guys um, and find the right tools and, and but in future we will improve that thing and we will make it more useful and more accessible for you the first thing that we are going to do is to somehow find a way to enable q a because yeah. now we're up to our q a time and we yeah. have no way to do it next time we will have a way to do it i'm yeah. very confident in that how about we ramp up just yeah, yeah, like sure. that because uh, I- Nitin, you had a really, really brilliant content around certificates, um, but I think it's too much for our audience to stay another 30 minutes to listen yeah. another thing because that content blow me away. It's nice, but it's uh, like uh, loads of content that now I have to uh, accumulate and, and think about that. Let's proceed next time with the next topics and see how it goes. Sure. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, probably we'll wrap up. Uh, uh, then, yeah, so uh, I'm the, looking at the forms. We don't have any more questions at the moment okay. into the forms. Yeah. Um, but it's. I'm glad that we had at least two questions there. That means the people were interested, right? That was the yeah. first episode. So I'm very positive. Yeah, so we will uh, we will keep uh, continuing this uh, series so that uh, uh, because this uh, is an uh, series that is happening across um, Europe and in US also. So uh, we as a community, we are trying to uh, do it first in Ireland and uh, probably uh, um, there are hiccups, uh, right? Especially when we use a new technology. So that's probably we'll overcome that. We know that we should have enabled that moderator q and when scheduled the meeting so that's where the, the gap happened or we'll I'll, we'll rectify that and um, yeah we have a youtube channel yeah we can use the youtube channel to perhaps publish yeah. the videos there yeah what, what do you think maybe in future we can try to stream from the youtube channel because the youtube channel is a letter kenny uh, community group channel yeah 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 so uh, um, probably we um, what we can do is uh, you can continue following uh, our site uh, called lkmug.org that w- we will keep all the links in this site and all our new events and everything will be updated here so we are not updating frequently but going forward we will publish all our events and all the the videos uh, links and everything will be published here okay so uh, can you yeah. Nitin, can you share the link for the form again yeah uh, the link is somewhere in the chat because if there are folks that have feedback they can still submit that form that form is anonymous yeah. so you can say you guys suck that was a waste of time, or you can say that was helpful. I learned something. That form is still there, and maybe perhaps we'll keep that form for a future in case you someone wants to give us feedback anonymously. LK, what was the? Uh, so it's bit li. It's somewhere in the chat. LK um, ask, right? L, it is LK ask. Yeah. LK ask with capital. So oh, bit, bit I'm bit. seeing. I'm not seeing your screen. Yeah, I'm seeing um, a black... I think your screen is blank actually. Yes, yeah. I'm seeing a black screen. If you can yeah. reveal your screen and just paste it there, that form uh, will remain open for feedback. Yeah, so let me share my screen. Where is it? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. But share the short uh, hand URL because yeah. <laughs> that thing on top is extremely long. Uh, give me a second. Probably I'll have to edit the slide. Add, uh, please. Uh, so the second read. thing, your nickname. That's optional. If you want to curse us, you might leave that field blank, and you can curse us in the top uh, box, and then that's 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 it, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we can. Sh-